In this video, we'll begin our treatment of the weak field semen effect, which is uh, when an external applied magnetic field is much, much smaller than the magnetic field already experienced by the electron in an atom, which is on the order of 10 Teslas. In that case, we take as our unperturbed Hamiltonian, our Hamiltonian for the hydrogen atom, and we include the fine structure corrections as part of our, our unperturbed Hamiltonian. The reason for that is because each one of the fine structure corrections is of the same scale. They all uh, scaled as the fine structure constant to the fourth. So they were all of the same order. Uh, so we take our spin orbit coupling correction, which was proportional to the internal magnetic field as the scale uh, for the fine structure corrections. For the case of a weak magnetic field, then the contributions from the Zeeman effect will be much smaller than those from the fine structure. And our Zeeman Hamiltonian can be taken as a perturbation to this entire system. So that means that our new Hamiltonian will be our uh, pseudo unperturbed Hamiltonian over here, plus our perturbation parameter lambda times the Siemens Hamiltonian over here. Uh, now, before developing a treatment for this, it's important to remember that the hydrogen spectrum with the fine structural corrections still had some degeneracies left over. So hydrogen spectrum with the fine structure still has degeneracies. So we first have to figure out if we have to use the tools from degenerate perturbation theory, or if we can find a basis state in which uh, our perturbation Hamiltonian, which is the Zeeman one, is already diagonalized. And to illustrate this, we can consider the first three excited states of hydrogen and the associated allowed orbital angular momenta. So our, for the original hydrogen atom, we had a very large perturbation uh, degeneracy where uh, this energy level was degenerate with this one, and these degenerate levels were all degenerate with one another. The fine structure correction resulted in all of these energy levels being lowered. And those with orbital angular momentum now appearing as doublets. So here's another one over here. And Uh, there's three other ones, or sorry, there's just two over here. This energy level was still degenerate with this one, and this one was degenerate with this one, and this energy level over here was degenerate with this one. So in spite of the fine structure corrections, the hydrogen spectrum continues to be degenerate, and we would like to uh, check if we can find the basis state for which we can use non-degenerate perturbation theory. Uh, there should be another energy level over here. So this is uh, for the case of a total angular momentum of three halves. And the degenerate levels all have uh, different quantum numbers mj, so this is minus three half, minus one half, one half, and three halves. This state, for example, has a total angular momentum of one half, which means that it still has degenerate eigenstates with quantum number mj given by minus one half and one half. So ignoring the degeneracy with this one, this energy level has a twofold degeneracy, 
this energy level has a fourfold degeneracy. Okay, so according to uh, degenerate perturbation theory, DPT, we will need to calculate the matrix elements of our Zeeman Hamiltonian. which look like this. The degeneracies happen for a given N and they can also happen for a given L. So this, uh, or for, for different Ls. So this at L equals zero, this energy level is degenerate with this one, which has L equals one. They both have the same uh, Yeah, and it can, uh, it can also happen for uh, different quantum numbers mj. So over here, you also have degeneracies from different quantum numbers. So if we want to show that this is a good basis to work in, we would have to show that for different orbital angular momentum, the matrix elements are zero. And for different side projections of the total angular momentum, these matrix elements are also zero. So for the first case, because our Seaman Hamiltonian involves the Z projection of the orbital angular momentum and the Z projection of the spin angular momentum, that means that the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum square commutes with this Hamiltonian. And this is because this operator commutes with any a component of the orbital angular momentum and it always commutes with the spin. So what this means is our matrix elements are equal to zero when L is not equal to L prime. And this is because uh, eigenfunctions of the angular, of the total angular momentum, or sorry, of the orbital angular momentum squared are also eigenfunctions of the Seaman Hamiltonian. And each one of these have different eigenvalues. So that means, yeah, I'll do it in another page. So if our matrix elements for different orbital angular momentum are zero, that means that we still have to consider matrix elements with different Z projections of the total angular momentum. So we still have to consider all of these matrix elements where in general, mj prime is not equal to mj. So this is for the case where L is equal to L prime now. Since we already showed that when they're not equal to one another, this matrix element is zero. For this case, because we can write the Z projection of the total angular momentum as the sum of the Z projection of the orbital angular momentum plus the Z projection of the spin angular momentum. Then this operator necessarily commutes with our Zeeman Hamiltonian because the Zeeman Hamiltonian uh, has both of these. So this is just saying that uh, an operator commutes with itself. And what that means then is the matrix elements uh, for different MJs has to be 
zero necessarily when mj is not equal to mj prime. So what this means then is the only matrix elements that are non-zero are the ones for, uh, for which the orbital angular momenta and the Z projection of the total angular momentum are the same. In other words, only the diagonal elements of our Zeeman Hamiltonian. And to summarize what this means is our Zeeman Hamiltonian is already diagonalized in uh, this basis, what we, we've been calling the coupled basis. So what this means then is Zeeman Hamiltonian is diagonalized in this basis and we're allowed to use non-degenerate perturbation theory to calculate the first order energy corrections as per uh, the loophole that was presented for degenerate perturbation theory a few videos ago. So we can use non-degenerate perturbation theory to calculate the first order corrections due to the Zeeman effect. So in the next video, we'll carry out this calculation for the first order energy correction due to this magnetic field in the coupled basis, in the basis N, L, J, M, J. And to do that, uh, we'll have to develop one more tool that's sometimes known as the projection lemma. Uh, and we'll end up with a final expression for our first order energy corrections.